We are talking about trigonometry functions and graphs lesson number four, determining angle measure from a trigonometric ratio. In previous math courses, we used the concept of reference angle and the sign of a trig ratio to determine angle measures in degrees given the value of the sine cos or tan ratio. So we'll use the following procedure, these steps, to determine the angle measure between 0 and 360 degrees given the value of a trig ratio. So step one, we'll determine which quadrants the angle will be in by looking at the sign of the ratio. For example, if we're given that the value of some sine of an angle is equal to a positive value, then we know that we're going to be in quadrant one or quadrant two. If we're given a value of a cosine ratio and it's, it's negative, say, then we will know that we are in quadrant two and quadrant three. Step two, determine the reference angle, always between zero and 90 degrees, and draw a rough sketch in the appropriate quadrants. So say we were looking at for sine, then we would look at something like that. If it was cosine being negative, then we'd look for something like that. And remember that to determine the reference angle, we're going to use second sine, which is going to be this sine inverse of the value of the sine ratio, or second cos or second ten. And remember that it's going to be the absolute value of the given quantity. So we're going to disregard any negatives. In step three, we determine the rotation angles using the reference angle and the quadrants that we found. We should always check that the given domain to determine which quadrants are valid in the calculation. Sometimes the domain is restricted and we'll have to watch for that. So let's use these skills in class example number one and try and solve cos theta is equal to negative 0 0.5 where we're looking at zero between zero and 360 degrees inclusive. So we have cos of theta is equal to negative 0 0.5. So where, since we can see that it's negative, then which quadrants are we going to be talking about? Well, if we draw the, the grid here, then since cos is negative, that's going to be in quadrant two and quadrant three. So we have these reference angles right here and right here. And so it's going to be in quadrant two and quadrant three. So quadrants two and quadrants three, we need to find this reference angle. So we're going to disregard this negative and then consider that we have cos inverse of the value of 0 0.5. Now, see, we, we disregarded the negative. We only want the positive version. And so we're going to go, go to our calculator to find out what that is. We have cos inverse, so second cos. And then we have 0.5. We've disregarded the negative. And we get 60 degrees. So this is going to be 60 degrees. This is a reference angle. So that means that this value here is 60 degrees and that value there is 60 degrees. We'll call this angle one and call this angle two. So the reference angle is 60 degrees. In quadrant two, the rotation angle goes from the standard position all the way to that point. Since this is 60, we're, we're thinking about 180 minus 60. So that is going to be 120 degrees for the rotation angle. We think from standard position all the way to the next one, we went 180 degrees here, and then we added 60 degrees. So this is quadrant three, but the rotation angle is 180 plus 60, that's 240 degrees. Taking a look at the next example, class example number two, we're given that the sine of theta all squared brackets can be written as sine squared theta, we're going to solve this equation, sine squared theta is equal to 0 0.5. Well, since sine squared theta is equivalent to writing sine theta squared, then we can say sine theta all squared, then is equal to 0 0.5. But we can take the square root of both sides. So that means that sine theta can be equal to plus or minus the square root of 0 0.5. So we have two cases here. Case one is where sine theta is equal to positive root 0 0.5. And in the other case, we have sine theta is equal to negative root 0 0.5. Let's solve the first case. We have sine theta is equal to positive square root of 0 0.5.
Well, if it's positive, that means that we have a scenario where we're in quadrant one and two. And we'll just draw the, that there. And that means then that theta, using our calculator, so we can go to our calculator and say the sine of theta, second sine of the square root of 0.5, and oh, 45 degrees. So we can go back and say this is. Well, let's get rid of this first. So we minimize that. We have this is going to be 45 degrees. All right. Remember, on this side, we have negative square root of 0.5. But remember that when we're trying to find the reference angle, we're disregarding that negative. So the, the reference angle for that one is also going to be 45. So this is 45, and this angle here is 45. Well, therefore, then the first angle is going to be just the 45 degrees. The second angle is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 45 degrees. So angle 2 is going to be 135 degrees. Well, what about for the second case? So in this case, we'll do the same thing. It means that sine theta is equal to negative square root of 0 0.5 and the reference angle here is again 45 degrees remember we're disregarding the negative when we use the calculator to find the reference angle that means then but what will our picture be well our picture is going to be here if it's negative we have quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 so even though the reference angle might be the same we're looking at these angles now in different quadrants. So that means here we'll call this angle 3. Angle 3 is from standard position all the way here 180 plus 45. So this is 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. So that's 225 degrees. And then the other angle, angle 4, is it looks like we can go all the way around, all the way around to 360 degrees and then subtract 45 degrees. So that's equal to 315 degrees. And so we have all these answers that satisfy this equation. We have 45 degrees, we have 225 degrees, we have 135 degrees and 315 degrees. Let's talk about angle measure and degrees from reciprocal trig ratios. There are no calculator keys for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So we have to think about them as reciprocals of the primary form. So for example, to solve cotangent x equals square root of 3, we have to rewrite it because we know that the cotangent is the reciprocal of tan, and that means that this is the reciprocal of the tangent value. So tan x is equal to 1 over root 3. Solving this for x will also solve x for cotangent x equaling square root 3. So to solve cotangent x equals square root of 3, we can say, think of this as solving this value, 1 over the square root of 3. Tan x is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. When we solve for it, x then equals the tan inverse of this value. And we need a calculator to find out what that is. So we have, we'll just clear that, second tan uh, 1 divided by the square root of 3, 30 degrees. So this is 30, 30 degrees. x is equal to 30 degrees. Now this is the reference angle, right? So when we're talking about the reference angle, we think, okay, well, the cotangent, the value of it, is a positive value. That means that it's going to be positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And of course, these angles are going to be the same. They are going to be the reference angles. It's going to be 30 degrees. This is also going to be 30 degrees. So we can think of x, x1 as 30 degrees, the first quadrant. And the second angle is going to be all the way to 180 plus 30 more. So this is 180 degrees plus 30 degrees. That's equal to 210 degrees. Taking a look at classic example number four, 
determining the measure of x to the nearest degree between 0 and 360 when secant x is equal to negative 1.2631. So let's take a look at the reciprocal version. So we have cos x is equal to 1 over negative 1.2631, but we're going to just look at the positive version so that we can determine the reference angle. So x then will equal cos inverse of 1 divided by 1.2631. So going to our calculator, we can say second cos, 1 divided by 1.2631. And we get a reference angle then of 37.66. So we have x is equal to 37.655, I guess. Now let's store that in our calculator so that we can so we'll store it as x even. And then what we can find is, since that is the reference angle, let's go back and draw the picture for cosine or secant, then it's going to be negative in quadrants 2 and 3. These are where the reference angles are. So in one case, x1 is equal to 180 degrees minus the reference angle. So that's 37.655. So let's see if we can do that with our calculator. We have 180 minus our answer, or minus x. And that's equal to 142.3. So this is 37.655. And that's going to be equal to 142.3 degrees. And x2 is going to be 180 degrees plus that same 37.655. So that is going to be 180 plus x. And we get 217.7 degrees. Taking a look at part B, we have cosecant x is equal to 2.45. So let's take a look at the reciprocal version. So we have sine x is equal to 1 over 2.45. Now there's no negative here, so we can just keep it as positive. But where is sine positive? Sine positive is, is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So those are the spots for the reference angles. And so let's find out what that reference angle is. x is equal to sine inverse of this value of 1 divided by 2.45. And so if we go to our calculator, then we can find out we have a second sign, and we have 1 divided by 2.45. And then we find out what that is, 24.0895. So I'm going to store that as x. And then we can find out what the x1 is. x1 is going to be just what that value is. So it's 24. So x1 is, is equal to 24.0 to the nearest degree. I guess we could just say 24 degrees. And x2 is going to be equal to 180 minus that value. So 180 degrees minus 20. 4.08 degrees, 89 degrees. So x2 then ends up being what? Let's find out in our calculator. So 180 minus x is going to be equal to 155.9. Now to the nearest degree, then we should say then that it's going to be 156 degrees. Let's take a look at class example number five and determine the measure of theta to the nearest whole number where theta is an angle between zero and 360 degrees inclusive. Taking a look at cos theta is equal to zero, we can try and draw which quadrant it's in, but then we take a look at this value zero and it's neither positive or negative. So this leads us to believe that it might be on the y-axis. So let's take a look though. If we said the, the, the angle then it's going to be the cos inverse of the value of the trig ratio. So we could say theta is equal to cos inverse of zero. So we have theta is equal to cos inverse of zero. And when we find that in our calculator, we can say, well, second cos is 
zero is going to be equal to 90 degrees. So when we come back here, we say the reference is going to be 90 degrees. That means that it could be this angle right here, or we could also say a reference angle from the x-axis is this angle here. That's the reference angle. So then the whole rotation angle would be all the way to here. So we could say that the second one is equal to 270 degrees. Well, taking a look at cosecant theta is undefined, but what does it mean to be undefined? Usually when we see a value of math when it's undefined, uh, there's a couple ways that we can think of it. Uh, we can think of it as like a number over zero. The number is so big that we can't define it. But let's take a look at the reciprocal trig ratio to cosecant theta. So cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. Now for this whole value to be undefined, then it would mean that sine theta would equal zero. So let's solve for that. So sine theta then would have to equal zero. And we can say then theta is equal to the sine inverse of the value of zero. Well, when we find that on our calculator, so we can say second sine and then of zero, and find that we get that the answer is zero. So the, the angle is zero as a reference angle. Now when we draw our picture here, we could say it's an angle of zero, so that's one of the answers. And then you have another one where it's zero again as a reference angle, so right on the x-axis, but then that is an angle. So we say theta two is equal to 180 degrees since we're talking about degrees here and then as a third one we think we think okay taking a look at the domain here you can see that there's an extra equals here so that theta can also equal 360 degrees so we have a third one theta 3 is equal to 360 degrees so all those values are in the domain